1923, a movie called The Ten Commandments hit the screens, telling the story of Moses and the biblical commandments. This movie isn't just serious stuff. It's packed with funny, shocking, and sad facts that'll keep you hooked. One moment that stands out is when Moses parts the Red Sea, it's epic. Have you got a scene that stuck with you? Or maybe a memory linked to this movie? Share it with us in the comments below. We're all ears for your stories. Keep watching for more interesting tidbits about the film. In the early days of cinema, there was a remarkable film that stood out for its sheer brilliance. Directed by a visionary filmmaker, it brought to life an ancient biblical tale with such grandeur and scale that it left audiences spellbound. This cinematic masterpiece wasn't just about visual spectacle, it carried a profound message about faith and redemption that resonated then and still does today. The director of this monumental project wasn't just any filmmaker, he was a true visionary who dared to take on an immense challenge. With meticulous attention to detail, every aspect of the production was carefully crafted to transport viewers to a different time and place. As the lights dimmed in theaters, audiences were drawn into the epic saga unfolding before them. From the captivating performances to the elaborate set designs, every element contributed to the immersive experience. Decades have passed since its release, yet this film remains beloved by audiences of all ages. Its enduring impact serves as a reminder of the timeless power of storytelling to captivate and inspire. In conclusion, this cinematic triumph continues to stand as a testament to the artistry and vision of its creators, leaving an indelible impression on the history of cinema. In the world of movies, Charles Farrell had some memorable roles. He acted in different films like The Hunchback of Notre Dame with Lon Chaney as Sir a big movie by Cecil B. DeMille and The Cheat with Pola Negri. When they were making the Ten Commandments, they brought about 225 Orthodox Jews from New York to California to be extras. Also, Nita Naldi, who many thought was the next Theta Bara, made her mark in the industry at that time. In 2014, archaeologists unearthed one of the movie's prop sphinx statues beneath the desert dunes of Guadalupe, California. Despite its fragmented state, efforts are underway to restore it for a potential exhibit by late 2015. Julia Fay, known for her appearances in several biblical epics, including the Ten Commandments, also starred in The King of Kings, Samson and Delilah, and a later rendition of the Ten Commandments in 1956. Charles Farrell, who appeared in the Ten Commandments, later found success on television with roles in sitcoms like My Little Margie and his own show, The Charles Farrell Show. In 1923, a classic film was born. Fast forward to 2019, it became accessible to all as it entered the public domain. Surprisingly, in 2021, it found its way onto YouTube with rental fees attached. Two notable actresses, one known for portraying Moses' sister and the other as the Queen of Egypt, came together in a 1956 version of the film. Later, they reunited for the 1960 remake of another movie. The connection between these stars adds another layer to the rich history of cinema. In various Oscar-nominated films, a well-known actor left his mark, appearing in notable works such as The Love Parade, Shanghai Express, 100 Men, and A Girl, The Adventures of Robin Hood, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, and Heaven Can Wait. During this era, a new actress also made her debut. Meanwhile, another actor, who later starred in a popular series, faced challenges with alcoholism and persistent hiccups. These backstage stories offer a glimpse into the lives of those involved in the entertainment industry. During filming, around 60-bit players got injured in chariot crashes in just one day. Most got patched up and returned to work. Julia Fay appeared in more Cecil B. DeMille films than any other actress. She left acting in the early 1930s to study singing and write. Later, DeMille brought her back for roles in Samson and Delilah and The Ten Commandments. Leatrice Joy succeeded Gloria Swanson as DeMille's female star, featuring in several of his productions, including The Ten Commandments. In a special team-up, Charles Farrell and Janet Gaynor starred in 12 movies together, including famous ones like Seventh Heaven and Street Angel. Despite not feeling well, Rex Ingram took on his last role in a Christmas show after Cosby asked him personally. This earned the show lots of viewers even after Ingram passed away. National Geographic's show drain the ocean Hollywood found important pieces of the set and statues from the movie's production back in 1923 like film canisters and makeup containers. These discoveries give us new insights into the movie's history. 
In the 1923 movie The Ten Commandments, Julia Fay, known for her bit parts, had a notable off-screen relationship with director Cecil B. DeMille. Despite their romantic involvement ending, DeMille continued to cast her in small roles. Richard Dix, another actor in the film, achieved a significant milestone by being the first male actor nominated for an Oscar for his performance in Cimarron, a Best Picture winner. Additionally, the film featured Technicolor sequences totaling 338 feet, appearing in the prologue in Reel 3 intercut with tinted footage. These elements added depth and visual appeal to the narrative. The set for the Ten Commandments was massive, with colossal statues and sphinxes towering over the actors. It was built in Guadeloupe Dunes, north of LA, and later buried beneath the sand. Eugene Paulette was initially considered for a role in another movie. Many of the chariot crashes in the film were real. The remains of the set were rediscovered in 1983 and are now a protected archaeological site in California. Despite efforts, funds for excavation have not been secured. These facts add depth to the movie's history and production, showcasing the scale of the project and its lasting impact on Hollywood. Craftsmen numbering 1800 constructed the colossal Egyptian sets at Guadeloupe Sand Dunes. Charles Farrell, one of the early male American stars, appeared in a nude scene in the 1928 film The River, directed by Frank Borzich. Although Dan is not a modern-day pharaoh, comparisons are drawn between the two wealthy and deluded men in the film. A subtle motif in the art direction echoes. This parallel, the curved V-design seen at the bottom of the columns in Pharaoh's throne room is replicated in the V-shapes, forming an X on the balcony column in Dan's home. In the making of the film, lavish feasts akin to those depicted were prepared by Eugene Paulette, who later appeared in The Adventures of Robin Hood. Julia Fay, who featured in the film, later starred in an advertisement for Lux Toilet Soap alongside other MGM contract stars. The film's production required a significant amount of material, with 16 miles of cloth and 3 tons of leather utilized for props and costumes. In Arizona during the filming of The Ten Commandments, Estelle Taylor fell ill with arthritis after being caught in a rainstorm. This forced her to leave the production, leading to Lois Wilson stepping in to replace her. In a poignant scene, Mary writes a farewell note on a page from a book. Interestingly, the page she writes on contains the poem Halas by Oscar Wilde. Julia Fay took her role seriously, studying paintings of Napoleon's first wife Josephine to accurately portray her in The Fighting Eagle. These behind-the-scenes insights shed light on the dedication and attention to detail of the cast and crew. In the realm of classic cinema, there exists a timeless masterpiece that transports audiences to ancient biblical times. This cinematic gem from the golden age of movies offers a captivating journey rich with historical splendor. Through the lens of early film technology, particularly evident in its striking visuals, viewers are immersed in the epic tale of Exodus. The production of this film is remarkable, with meticulous attention to detail evident in every frame. Behind-the-scenes stories reveal the dedication to authenticity, such as Estelle Taylor's decision to prioritize costume accuracy over other roles. These anecdotes add depth to the movie's legacy. One intriguing aspect is the versatility of Julia Fay, who seamlessly portrays different characters across two versions of the film, each directed by Cecil B. DeMille. Her ability to embody distinct roles speaks to her acting talent and DeMille's directorial skill. As the story unfolds on screen, it weaves a narrative of biblical proportions capturing the essence of ancient times. Directed with finesse and brought to life by a talented cast, the film explores themes of faith, courage, and divine intervention. In essence, this cinematic masterpiece transcends its medium, leaving a lasting impression on both audiences and history itself. It's a timeless tale that continues to captivate viewers, reminding us of the enduring power of storytelling.